So I was studying um, Daniel chapter 11 um, because of a comment that I received and I decided to look at Daniel 11 closer to see if there's anything that I missed in here, anything that might change my opinion or my viewpoint of things. And I will say that there's one thing that I think is interesting here, but um, overall, I just have the feeling like, why or where exactly do we see anything about a third temple being built? Um, I'm not, you know, of course, the Bible says, um, especially in the New Testament, that ye are the temple of God. We are the temple of God. Our bodies are the temple of God, built without hands. But people believe that the uh, the people who we call Jews, let's just call them the Jews for the sake of this video, the Ashkenazi, um, Ashkenazi Jews are going to build a third temple to fulfill prophecy. But when I'm I'm looking in Daniel, and I'm not seeing anything about a third temple. I'm seeing um, in chapter 11, verse 31, where the old temple, the second temple was destroyed. I see where Emperor Titus entered in and he um, destroyed the city. He sieged the city and he destroyed the, um, he profaned the temple and all of that. I see that there, but I don't see anywhere if you scroll down because this is all happening over the course of thousands of years. I don't see where it says that Israel or the Jews or or God's people are going to make another temple or build another temple. I don't see that anywhere. So as we go down to verse 45, that is the last verse in this chapter. There is no place where it says that the Jews or Israel will build a temple for God or to God in Jerusalem. No, what I do see, though, is the prophecy of the future son of perdition. Now, I have to point something out that all of these kings are different people. These are different events, different like from verse 23 to 27 might be one king. And even if it says king of the south in multiple places, it could be an entirely different person who becomes the king of the south because this is happening maybe a, a few verses down. You're already 400 years later or, or 600, or maybe not quite that much, but 200 years later. And read down a couple more and you're 100 years later. So there are different kings throughout this chapter. Throughout this whole chapter, it, it is not about one person. So the portion about Titus is very small. I cover most of that. And after him, down here, we get into 36. Uh, I think that might be about Titus as well. Or it could be actually about a different person. But we, you know, but there are a lot of them, since a lot of them were Roman, it may not. It, it may not change and say the king of the south. Right now we're reading about the king of the north because it's talking about Rome. And there were many popes, there were many Roman emperors to sit in that seat. So the king of the north here involves a lot of people, a lot of actions that they take. But it, it doesn't really separate them and, and, and read it as they are different people. But they are. Um... So, but anyway, we're getting down here and we're still dealing with the king of the north right there. And there's the king of the south. The king of the south comes back again. But again, these are all different people. This is a trip through history. And so to to get to the point, <laughs> sorry for going off the, the track there a little bit, but we do not see any place where it says, Israel or the Jews will make a third temple to God. I mean, that's probably because Jesus said that 
Jerusalem will be trodden down by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And, of course, the Gentiles are um, Ashkenaz. It's just, might as well just look that up now so people can see for, for those who haven't seen it before. When Jesus says, Jerusalem shall be trodden down by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. He's literally talking about the Ashkenazi Jews, or they, they're called Jews, but the Bible says that they are Gentiles. So he might as well have just said, Jerusalem will be trodden down by the Ashkenazi until the times of the Ashkenazi be fulfilled. He might as well have just said that. Um, so, anyway, that last verse in Daniel chapter 11 that I wanted to point out is about this, this the son of perdition we uh where is this the that's the new king james version i don't want that sorry for delaying so long sorry 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 okay verse 45 and he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. The glorious holy mountain is Mount Zion, Jerusalem. Yet he shall come to his end and none shall help him. So he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Here we have Jerusalem, the glorious holy mountain, Zion, between the Red Sea and the Mediterranean Sea. The Red Sea, this, this is where the son of perdition, according to Daniel chapter 11, will plant the tabernacles of his palace. He is going to put his headquarters there. The headquarters of the, the beast government, the New World Order. That's where he is putting that. Now, I'm watching Israeli News Live. I haven't watched him in a long time, but um, I'm watching him again tonight to try to find out what's going on with this uh, war. <laughs> and he uh, mentions that there are, quote, Jews who are trying to establish Israel as the headquarters of the New World Order. And so as I was studying Daniel tonight, when he said that, I was like, yeah, it says he's going to plant his um, the tabernacles of his palace in Jerusalem. So the third temple that these people are building, I don't even know if it's going to, I guess you can call it a temple, but they're building it for the son of perdition. They're not even building it for, I, I don't know how many people are in on it. I don't want to assume that everyone knows that this is actually for the Antichrist or for the son of perdition. But it's kind of, definitely people who are higher up know that this is for their Messiah. And... I probably shouldn't even get into who I believe the Messiah is. I'm, I'm only like 90, 80 to 90 percent sure about who the the quote the fake of course the fake Messiah is the the quote um, quote Messiah, the son of perdition, and that is who I believe is Alexander the Great. But I'm never going to claim to be 100 percent right about that. It's you know it's just kind of where I'm leaning, um, and. Yeah, I, I, I literally, believe, literally believe he is going to rise again. Somehow, that angel in Revelation chapter 5, with the key to the bottomless pit, falls to the earth as a fallen angel and opens the bottomless pit, and out comes Apollyon, who I believe is Alexander the Great. But we will see. You know, could be completely wrong. Could be completely wrong. So, we will see though. But, 
they are definitely not building it for our Messiah.